Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, August 31st. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect partly sunny skies and a high of about 100 in San Antonio today. The Texas Department of Transportation's Roadside Assistance Program, known as HERO, is coming to San Antonio starting today. We have an explanation of what the program offers that you can find at the link in the episode's description. Birria, the spicy Mexican stew, is having a huge moment in San Antonio right now, with new restaurants opening up and quick sellouts. Keep an eye out on our Taste Teams page for some tips on how to make it at home. And now, let's move on to the top stories for the day. An advertising brochure for Rosita Creek Ranch in Eagle Pass touted the more than 7,000-acre property, with an asking price of $14.5 million, as a true sportsman's paradise. What really hooked the buyers were the white-tailed trophy deer they were told roamed the property. The company and partnership that bought the ranch now say that it's not the deer-hunting mecca they were led to believe. The new owners have sued for fraud, violations of the Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act, and a breach of contract over the sale. You can read more about the lawsuit in the state program at the center of it at the link in the episode's description. When the coronavirus pandemic shut down San Antonio schools in March and forced students to begin learning remotely, many worked with paper packets or shared computers with their siblings. But for the fall semester now underway, area school districts are stressing real-time virtual interaction with teachers and classmates. Most have jettisoned paper packets. Until students return to physical classrooms in September or October, the revamped online instruction means about 350,000 students each need their own laptop or tablet and reliable internet. And despite months of efforts to make sure they have those things and the staggering numbers of computers distributed since the spring, some students are still without. We have the latest update on what local districts are doing to make distance learning happen. Amid the buzz of hair clippers and the sounds of old rhythm and blues songs, the calls to defund police budgets doesn't come across as a single viewpoint at the Elite Styles Barbershop and Shirts. For the past six years, Elite Styles has been the hub for black, brown, and white customers who gather not only for haircuts, but to discuss issues including racism, gentrification, and socioeconomic problems. Vincent T. Davis spent time there listening to those conversations for his story about the local conversation around police brutality, protests, and calls to defund police. After the city's major homeless shelters shut down their doors to new clients when the pandemic hit, many have started to welcome new clients again with new space limits and stricter guidelines. Before the pandemic, Haven for Hope served 1,700 people daily. Now there are about 800 clients staying in its dorms and courtyard, plus 300 at a downtown hotel that is temporarily housing older clients who are at high risk of serious consequences if they contract the virus. Liz Hardaway takes a closer look at how Haven and the city's two Salvation Army shelters are handling social distancing and testing for COVID-19 as the pandemic wears on. To keep our readers up to date on the path of COVID-19, the Express News has built a dashboard of interactive graphics showing the spread of the virus in the San Antonio area, in Texas as a whole, and across the United States. We've also created an interactive map of San Antonio for COVID-19 testing sites that don't require a doctor's referral. You can find a link to the dashboard and the interactive map in this episode's description. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside your Express News subscription. The San Antonio Metropolitan Health District reported 110 new cases of COVID-19 on Sunday, continuing a downward trend as the spread of the coronavirus slows. Metro Health verified nine COVID-19 deaths on Sunday from reviewing death certificates. Call them the hidden costs of the novel coronavirus. In dozens of ways, large and small, the disease is eating away at public coffers. We have a look at how laptops and strip club fees are affecting state government. 
The arrest of a black jogger after two San Antonio police officers stopped and questioned him about a domestic violence assault, which he didn't commit, has emerged as a catalyst for debate. Mayor Ron Nirenberg wants the police department to conduct a full review. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf said he believes a deadly struggle between deputies and an armed, distraught military veteran should have never happened and not to prompt the use of more mental health professionals in law enforcement. Single-family homes with mortgages backed by government-sponsored mortgage finance companies Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will now be protected from foreclosure through the end of the year, extending protection slated to run out August 31st. A San Antonio district judge found that Texas officials are violating the Federal National Voter Registration Act by denying residents a chance to register to vote anytime they apply for, renew, or update their driver's license. A San Antonio doctor alleges in a lawsuit filed Friday that Frost Bank allowed one of his employees to fraudulently divert about $300,000 from his dermatology practice. The Texas Education Agency has concluded that the San Antonio Independent School District did not fulfill its obligations under federal law to provide special education to eligible inmates in the Bear County Jail for a year ending in February. Carbon monoxide poisoning from generators has appeared to kill more people in Louisiana and Texas than Hurricane Laura itself, claiming at least eight lives on the Gulf Coast. A split on the city council over the appointment of a San Antonio Water System board member to represent the South Side has resulted in the withdrawal of both candidates. The Express News editorial board writes, quote, The two virtual conventions are over, signaling the next phase of this bruising battle. There will be one winner, but we fear it may come at the cost of our collective faith in democracy. No one has shunned a general election presidential debate since Richard Nixon in 1972, writes Gilbert Garcia, adding, Joe Biden doesn't necessarily need to convince people that change is necessary. He just needs to demonstrate that he's up to the job. This week in history, on September 3rd, 1973, UTSA opened its new campus to students. The front page of the Express News read, Several thousand students flocked to the first classes at University of Texas San Antonio's permanent campus on Tuesday, and everything ran according to plan at the tree-covered campus in northwest San Antonio. You can read more about the history of UTSA at the link in this episode's description. For 30 years, Doris Griffin has fought for seniors to receive the dignity and respect she believes is often lacking. She's spoken on their behalf as a nine-term member of the Texas Silver-Haired Legislator at the state capitol in Austin. She's lobbied for better services, including transportation and nutrition, in government offices and corporate boardrooms. She personally reaffirms her support in the living rooms of seniors who greatly appreciate her home visits. In her latest effort, she's spearheading a campaign for the safety and well-being of older San Antonians during these times of increased isolation and restricted services. Vincent T. Davis has more on this longtime seniors advocate at the link in the episode's description. As nearly 5,000 evacuees poured into the San Antonio area from East Texas and Western Louisiana, the city provided hotel rooms to the humans, and Animal Care Service provided emergency kennels for 93 dogs, 10 cats, and 2 birds, all at no charge. Barbaro in Montevista is serving strong pizzas engineered for takeout. You can read the full 52 weeks of pizza review at the link in the episode's description. The Texas A&M Aggies on Friday set aside practice and marched on campus against racial inequality. A Chinese-style cleaver is an affordable multitasking knife you should add to your collection, writes Paul Stevens in his latest cooking tips. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. 
Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcasts app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.